Okay, just a little for your information. Um, there are a couple of videos on the economics channel, so I'll leave a link below in case you want to see those. And so now on to the regular video performance. Alright, response video. Not really response, uh, reaction video we'll call it. And the con divide. Um, this room 101 thing. Um, yeah, it's really it's not going anywhere. Uh, you know, I thought maybe he was going to go somewhere better with the subject instead of the same old tripe. So now he's making the argument that uh, people so love life that they all they would tolerate all manner of torture, and the torturers would be totally frustrated because they couldn't make love lifers talk. <laughs> yeah, it's just pathetic. Um, it's such a such an insult. Well, anyway, I don't, I don't want to get on the subject of to torture, but there's there's absolutely no proof of this crap that torture doesn't work and all that kind of shit. Of course it works. It's every time it's been used, it's worked. Um, you know, the, the, and uh, you're not going to find if you go looking for through history to go find yourself somebody who survived the torture and um, never talked. You know. Uh, even the whole idea of what what, we, what kind of information you would have, I think, is a much more interesting question. You know, what are you being tortured for? So let's say you're being tortured to coerce you to give up something. Um, you know, to, 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 to preserve or save something of real, like it's critical. The, the, the war, the victory in the war, or, you know, the men on your ship. You know, so you're not going to give away the location of your ship. You don't want your shipmates to be killed. Um, there's lots of different, you know, degrees of how important the information is. You're not going to have to torture me very much to get me to tell you my name, <laughs> you know. Um, you know, and then, you know, all you have to do is if you have the address of my sister and, uh, you know, m my nieces, you know, you could just say, you know, yeah, well, we're going to, you know, rape and pillage them you don't talk, you know, that's going to change the game right there. I mean, they don't need to torture me, they just need to threaten me, extort me. And uh, the only people you have to extort with physical violence are people you don't have anything else on. But if you have something else on them, if you have something else to get to them with, it's going to be rough. <laughs> you know, um, I mean, really, would it take that, would it be that hard? Okay, they find out I live in Mendham, and then they show me the pictures of people in Mendham and say, these are the people we're going to kill brutally and horribly, um, you know, if you don't do what we uh, are requiring of you. Um, but this whole idea of, that you would love, you love life so much while you're being tortured that you just endure it, seems almost, uh, I, I mean, it seems laughable in, in a sense. Well, well, first, let's just deal, let's just get rid of this idiotic notion that torturers run out of means to torture somebody. I mean, there's about there's, there's about 50 million different kinds of poo, animal poo, you could shove in somebody's mouth or up their nose. <laughs> so, I mean, just just shoving poo in their mouth and, and nose, you, you've got you've got lots of lots of um, you know you've got hours of work right there. And when you think of the, the preposterous number of acids you could be dripping on different parts of somebody's body. I mean, just a little bit of acid on the kneecaps, you know, in two or three hours as it starts eating its way through the bones of your knee. Um, I'm whatever. I'm just saying this idea that the torturers are all frustrated because they don't know how else to hurt the person is just laughable. I mean, it's just, this is, you know, but this is, his, his, his videos are just comic strips, so, you know, it's, it's all fantasy film genre of reality. Um, yeah, when you get shot 50 times, just keep on going and get to the magic, you know, save the world button, because the bullets never hit you in any important places, because you're the superhero. It's not real. Real life is you. You you get in your heroic pose. They shoot the gun. The the forty five caliber bullet goes through your fucking head and blows the back of your skull off. And you're John F. Kennedy it's spilled all over the fucking car. All right. There's there's no profile. Yes, courageous. Big deal. Okay. Uh, when you're splattered all over the car seat, all that crap isn't going to mean anything. So anyway, this is just such a such a superficial treatment of something profoundly, 
profoundly meaningful about what you know what what psychology runs through us first, what we care about and why we care about it, which is the important why would you love anything in the first place <laughs> and and wouldn't wouldn't hate be the stronger emotion wouldn't a, a good visceral hatred give you more strength and love um I mean, certainly, I think it works, generally speaking, in most circumstances where this has really been tested. That, uh, you know, people really going into the contest, really going into the arena where they're going to feel the pain. They usually go into those arenas with a good ball of hate. Uh, <clears throat> you know, hate blocks pain better than love. Uh, because love leads you to things, leads you to thoughts of dignity and beauty and as you're in the middle of some very ugly circumstance, it might become apparent to you that uh, why would I love a life where I'm existing with people capable of doing this? You know, instead of making love, we're making horror and suffering. Hmm. Would I really want to? Would I really want to preserve anything about that? If this is what they have to resort to, if this is what they will resort to. Haven't you already lost? Theoretically. Um, so I think the only kind of, you know, the things that would give you real resistance in terms of, you know, resolving yourself to a circumstance and knowing that it will do no good. So if you could believe inside your head that if you talk it would make no difference to your welfare, that you're still going to be tortured, whether the, you know, no matter what their promises are. Uh, <clears throat> that might be one mechanism. Another mechanism might be the realization that if you talk, the the people you're protecting, you know, would end up being tortured twice as much as you, kind of thing. Like, you know, instead of just you being tortured, a bunch of other people will be tortured. And so that might be an easy way to understand, okay, talking will will just make this torture longer because it'll just change the person who's getting tortured. But if you could believe that they were going to get killed quickly, then you might rationalize and say, well, this torture isn't worth preventing a quick death. You know, so there's all kinds of value equations that would bounce around in your head um, in terms of you know, what it's worth. I, I would be just curious, let's say there was a, a circumstance where, to a procreator, I would say, a life lover, one of these life lovers. Um, let's say I am the power. Um, you know, you will forever lose the right to procreate. You will never be able to keep, you will never be able to instill your life loving passion in a new human being if you don't torture me. If you don't torture some information where I have the sterilization bomb. So you have to get the sterilization bomb or nobody will ever be able to procreate themselves a new life lover. <laughs> okay, uh, would you torture me to get it? So you could save your right to impose, to, to, to um, project your silly notions of accomplishment and purpose into somebody else's existence. <laughs> yeah. So would you torture me to do that? To preserve your right to impose? Hmm? Just curious. Um, so anyway, I'll play the end of this video. This really was hilarious. I'm not saying that, you know, most people, uh, you know, endure torture because they love life. <laughs> yeah, I'm, what I'm saying is, is it's point zero 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 one percent of the people who have been tortured. Um, endured the worst of torture because they loved life. I think it's just silly mush. Great, the torture, because they believe on a cost-benefit analysis, the torture they are enduring is not sufficient for them to abandon that which they love, which is being. All right, so that was really love being so much that, um, I mean, you know, do you really think that when you're in the middle of having your kneecaps dissolved by acid, that you're really going to be sitting there saying, I love being? No. Um, it might happen if somebody loves Jesus. 
<laughs> yeah, but it isn't going to be to say love being. Sorry, that just... Sorry, it's sorry. I mean, you know, I'd, I'd really, it'd be really fun if we do the experiment, huh? And find one of these love beingers and see how long they last. I'm not saying that this is true in all cases of people. I'm not saying this is true of all cases of people. Isn't that amazing? I'm not saying it's true of all cases. It's not even, it's not, it's not even a majority of cases, let alone all cases. And the minority is so minuscule that it's, you know, not even something worthy of note. It's 10 to the minus 33. It's like close to the Planck constant. It's such a minuscule number of people. Being subjected to tortures. That's just a thought experiment that I grabbed out of my favorite author, George Orwell. Right, you grab everything out of your favorite fantasy film. <laughs> yeah, okay, it's great. I mean, not that I love movies, I love the storytelling, but they're stories. Okay, people don't get shot 33 times and none of the bullets hit anything important and they get this, they get to stand up and get back on the horse and charge and all that. No, that isn't reality. We can't rule that out, though. We can't rule out that all people who are tortured love life. Oh, okay. Is that it? Um, Is that it? Being. Here we go. Being. Simple existence. Does it have value? I believe it does. Uh, yeah, well, I believe you're a silly, deluded fuckwit. <laughs> yeah, well, that's what I believe. I believe you're just so lost in your pretend fantasy life, the video game you're playing, that you have no clue what reality is. No clue at all. I, I mean, really, it's just, it's just really disgusting. Yeah, go to the nursing home and see all the people who are loving the being. They're all, they're all, they're all zenning in their being. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Oh, this really is a bug planet. A bug planet. It's a bug planet. Bugs, bugs. And the bugs aren't like these kind of fun bugs. They're little sadistic torturing bugs. Silly, idiotic bugs. They're not comical bugs. Ugh. Suck. Suck bugs. Suck bugs. So anyway. So, but I tried, right? The last video was you know, polite and engaging. Um, I left a link on his video and he left some kind of comment like whatever or some kind of stupid thing like that. And, um, yeah, and obviously the subject just didn't go anywhere. It went into another excuse to say being is so significant that it's, we all should, if we all got tortured for it, it would still kick ass. Still be all worth it. So even if we all got tortured and had our kneecaps dissolved with acid, it would still be worth it because we were being. I mean, there's just no low these people will not go to. <laughs> Shit. <laughs> so, so it's, like, it's like the God story, right? Are you okay, God? All right, Eve committed the sin of the apple thing, so I will give her intense, you know, uterus and vagina pain in popping out the next generation as a curse for all time. All women will be plagued with blights and pestilences as as a price to pay and and so even god believed that torture was somehow worked right he believed it was yeah i'll, I'll impose pain and that'll that'll force them to do the right thing and you know tell me what i want to know which is you love me um <laughs> this is just right where are we going with this how low will you go Oh, there's no low you won't go to. Oh, I see. So, yes, if we actually became bugs, this guy would be... Yeah, being is great. Now, it's humiliating, degrading, depressing, disappointing. Um, the horror. The horror.